Hi everybody, I'm Bill Sanders and this is Watch Art Sci. Uh, today, what I'd like to talk about are well-known watchmakers, uh, in fact, master watchmakers, who often combine their work with a lesser one, okay? And and I'm I've been the more I look, uh, the more I find things. By the way, we're <laughs> the it's been hotter than blazes here, and there's a thunderstorm now. So any kind of strange noises <laughs> has to do with that. Okay, uh, the first one I want to talk about is um, by Oak um, Junior. I said probably said it wrong, but it's. Uh, the watchmaker, really very well-known watchmaker, named a uh, really bright guy too, named Ludwig Uslin, uh, and his uh, perpetual calendar. Uh, this one has he built the the perpetual calendar using only nine parts, and this was to me this all very impressive. Uh, Patek uh, Philippe uses 182 on its perpetual calendar. I think it does a few more things than that too. But this one did it with nine, and the movement underneath it is the Ulysse Nardine uh, UN-118. Uh, just in looking at this, sort of a, another uh, watch brand is Resonance, and uh, they have an ETA base. Uh, and so you find, but that's a really good watch. It's expensive, but it's one of those ones, yeah, okay, but it's worth it. Even though the underlying movement in it is not considered to be high horology. It's, and depending on what version you get, you can get some from pretty good to pretty cheap ones. So, but but this is this is one of the things that I think it's important for a watch collector to know some of these details uh, for two reasons. One, you can find some of these watches that have some of the works by some of the best watchmakers in the world. Uh, even though they don't do the whole movement, they may be doing a crucial part of it. So we'll be looking at some more. Now this next one is a Harboring 2 repeater. And the, the it's it's got a five repeater, uh, five minute repeater module by uh, Dubois Dupra. And that, the interesting thing about that is that the module is by somebody else, whereas the basic movement, the A11B, is by Harbring 2. And so you can have it both ways. On the one hand, uh, the the basic movement can be made by one of the really top-rate uh, watchmakers, and then the module by someone or something that's added on there that's used in a lot of different places. Uh, the Dubois de, uh, de Praz is used in a lot of different ones. Now, this next one is uh, one I'm wearing. This is a Christian Vanderklaas series, 1974. Christian Vanderklaas, sort of a sort of a senior member of the of the independent watch group that uh, F. P. Jorn and some other guys started some years ago. And getting into that group is very hard, but uh, he's sort of been doing things, uh, Christian Vanderclaw has, as a watchmaker on certain aspects of it. Now, a lot of his watches, it turns out, have something uh, other than a Christian Vanderclaw base movement underneath. Some have uh, uh, this particular one here, the one I'm wearing, has a Soprod A10. And then on top of that is a, their, the movement is called the uh, CVDK 1068. Well, the 1068 part is a little um, uh, moon phase. And so that was uh, Christian Vanderclaw did that part. And they figured, well, that's the main thing. <laughs> to just and put it in a Soprod 18. Soprod 18, is, it's got its own really interesting story behind it. Okay, uh, moving right along now. Here, uh, this is we're really talking about several different things all at once in this particular watch. This is Hermes, slim to Hermes, and it means the impatient hour. I 
don't want to insult the French and try to pronounce that because I did and it didn't turn out too well. So anyway, now this watch, basically down around four o'clock, you have a little timer that you set and that serves as an alarm. And at that time, this little uh, thing goes off. It's the impatient hour. Uh, it's sort of like an alarm clock, but not quite. <laughs> And the, the module uh, that really is the heart of it is made by Agenhor. Uh, the module is called the AGH-4132. Now, if you go to the Agenhor site, and I recommend it, I think it's agenhor.ch, you go through there and you find all of these modules they've made, and they won all of these awards. And basically the watches that they made the modules for have won awards. They really weren't too interested in making movements. Later on uh, for uh, certain watches they did. I mean, when I say the movement, the basic uh, hand turning kind of movement, they, they've done those too. But uh, in particular, uh, um, Jean-Marc Viderec, who's the father, and his, his two sons are doing things too with this. There's a lot of stuff going on. But if you, the more you go into it, the more you find out that, you know, that you can put one of these Agonor modules on top of a lot of different things and it totally transforms it. Um, Van Cleve and Arpels have won several Grand Prix awards uh, because of the modules that Agenhor made for them. Now this Hermes is, is like super interesting because it has its own caliber that's called the H1912. Now this was made for them by Vaucher and they say, well, that's, you know, not in-house. Well, in this case it is because Hermes owns 25% of Vaucher. And so you have a you have a really interesting thing here. You have a luxury brand that you think of scarves and saddles and shoes and things like that. But man, I tell you that when they when they decided to get into watches, they really did it right, and they got the they got the very best. They got uh, on the one hand they have Agenor and uh, some of the other Hermes watches, especially the ones that won awards have a module by Agenor. And so this is another thing you can do. Uh, I have one watch that has uh, uh, the, uh, it's a Harry Winston by Retrograde, and the by Retrograde was by Agenhor. So I you know the movement is by uh, somebody else, by uh, Gerard Perigo, I believe. Okay, so you can find some of these really top-notch guys in different places. Now, Daniel Roth is probably one of the, to my, my mind, one of the top-notch watchmakers. I don't think he's won any awards, as a matter of fact. Oh, he won, a, except for every top watchmaker has a great deal of respect for everything he's done. And he's done quite a bit. Um, now, this particular one is, uh, this yellow one, is has a Gerard Perigo movement by Daniel Roth. And it's got what's called a double ellipse shape to it. And the double ellipse is sort of a trademark of Daniel Roth. Uh, it has sort of, sometimes they're a little longer, sometimes they're a little little smaller. Now, to the right is a Breguet 3130. This, was, this is how Breguet came back. Uh, uh, this, it used to be owned by uh, Chayume. And they hired Daniel Roth to help them bring back. So he started making watches for them with a, with a movement and everything else. The Brigade 3130 was one of the first fabulous watch. And so here you have, on the one hand, you have this uh, yellow uh, small seconds, six o'clock, with a Gerard Perigo movement. I don't know if he did too much with it, but there it is. Uh, on the other hand, then you have this other one he's done everything to. So it, you find a lot of different kinds of things like that. Now, next all is, this is even more complex, is uh, Roger Dubuis. Uh, I have his, uh, this particular one, but 
is was far more to it than this. This is the ZZ Diver. Um, one of his first watches he made when he back in the 90s was this homage chronograph, uh, and he has something called Caliber RD56, and it's based on Lamania 2310, very much so. Later, he did this one with his, the, totally did the movement himself, called the Easy Diver Chrono Excel with a caliber 78. The RD 78 is for Roger Dubuis, uh, uh his caliber. Now, the that Chrono Excel is like a really good watch for uh, for a chronograph on several different levels. Now. In addition, uh, the one that I mentioned, this is a fairly, you know, it's it's a it's a sports watch, and but first they came out with something that was called a sports activity watch and had what's called an RD fifty seven. Well, the RD fifty seven was essentially wholly based on the Lomania eighty eight fifteen and Longines caliber ninety nine zero one. Later, he came out with the Easy Diver RD14 movement, which is this one. This is called the Easy Diver. Uh, I don't, they have a bunch of funny names for it. Now, in this one, you can't see it here, so I put the picture up there. It has this gold rotor with engraving on it, and it's really nice. But And so I was looking for it later on, and I found this one called the RD281, same movement, same everything, except they was taken over. I'm trying to think what company. Anyway, the company that bought it from them uh, decided they wanted to cut back on some things. And so instead of a gold rotor, they had a, it was either steel or tungsten or something like that. They took away all of the, the intricate engraving and so forth, which is, you know, so you, it's, even though the RD-281 is essentially the RD-14, with a sort of toned down, I'll put it that way. So, I mean, there's all kinds of stuff that you can learn about these watches by, you know, as, even though some of them have movements that aren't aren't the one that, whoo, there's a thunderbolt that scared me. Okay, uh, now, if the final one I want to talk about is the Antoine Prezuzio. Now, his watches, he had this one called the Triple uh, Tourbillon that won a couple Grand Prix awards. But he has also, he has this other, other sort of a parallel one for, the, for those of us, <laughs> the rest of us. Uh, one that I really like and want to get is called the Trans World. And it's got a caliber APG 282. And uh, the, what it does is that you have a 24-hour, a really clever brilliant design and then you have this world turning inside of it and uh it's from the view from the south pole instead of the north pole and so at 24 hours a day you can see if you you're gonna have to know a little geography to help you out here but it's very cool watch the art of the tourbillon on the other hand uses the apg 28t i don't know too much about that uh movement but the price is <laughs> between 130 and 300,000, probably north of that as well uh, for that. So he, one of the things I, I think is important is that learn as much as possible about what's in these watches because, you know, sometimes me, and especially I stick up my nose, well, it's got a, you know, it's got an inexpensive movement. And sometimes that's true, but it's got this brilliant, piece of horology on top of it and the underlying movement is sort of like okay you, you just do the easy stuff and here's some interesting stuff to add to it well look at that's all for now and uh i really would like to get your feedback on this and some other ideas of say hey this watch has got a master uh watchmaker behind it and yeah they use some of these not <laughs> very uh, elite movements underneath, but boy, the module on top. Now, some of them, uh, like uh, Antoine Prezuzio, on the one hand, he's got these, these 
<laughs> these incredible tourbillons. Same thing with Roger Dubois. Same thing with all of these other ones. They have some watches. I mean, they can make whatever they want. Right now, uh, for example, uh, uh, Daniel Roth is just making tourbillons. That's all he wants to do. He makes like one or maybe two a year, and that's it. Okay, like I said, let me know what you want. Always, this is an invitation to subscribe if you like. And until next time, this is Bill Sanders for Watch Outside the Art and Science of Watts Collection.